Over the past decade, there have been few companies that have done more for the proliferation of cheap, great, high quality glass than the company TT Artisans. They burst onto the scene a few years ago with really nice build quality, all metal construction, really high speed lenses. And when you looked at their prices compared to the competition, it was honestly a no brainer. But there was one big caveat and it's that TT Artisans lenses were almost always manual focus, but that's not the case anymore. Fast forward to today and we have a brand new offering from TT Artisans and that's their new autofocus 27 millimeter 2.8. You can take one look at the lens and see that it is a pancake design, but is this lens able to punch above its weight? Let's take a look. It's fall over here in Kentucky and I thought this would be a great time to take this lens out with my Sony a7C and try to get some shots and see what this lens could do. So first and foremost, let's talk about what this lens actually is. Well, I'm going to take the lens cap off because it's actually kind of thick. It's got a USB-C mount inside it, but you can get a look at the lens. It's really tiny, very small construction, very lightweight and pairs well with modern compact camera designs. The lens is also available in a number of camera mounts. The one that I have is for the Sony E mount, but they also make it in the Fuji X mount and also the Nikon Z mount. And if it isn't clear at this point already, this 27 2.8 lens actually has APS-C coverage. It is not a full frame lens. If you put this lens on your full frame camera and try to shoot it wide open, um, you're gonna get tons and tons and tons of really dark vignetting, right? Not even really usable shots. But for APS-C camera designs or shooting like my Sony, my full frame Sony, shooting it in APS-C mode, you're gonna get really nice images. Taking a look at the size and weight of this lens, you can see it's, I mean, it's a teeny tiny microscopic lens um, and it weighs almost nothing. One thing that I thought was particularly interesting was when looking at the specs of this lens, they're all three models, the Z mount, the X mount, and the Sony E mount all have different weights with the Sony E mount that I have here being the lightest at 88 grams and the Nikon lens mount being the heaviest coming in at just over hundred grams. Looking at the build quality of this lens, I have to say the build quality was shockingly good. And I don't know why that surprised me so much because most of those other offerings, those 0.95 really fast lenses from TT Artisans that I've used in the past were also really high build quality. The lens, even even though some of the internals perhaps are plastic, all of the exterior surfaces of the lens are metal. The lens has a very premium feel. This looks like it's probably aluminum. All the surfaces on the exterior of the lens are anodized black, except for the lettering and numbers, which are engraved and filled with paint. In terms of the actual functions on the outside of the lens, the lens does have an aperture ring. This is a fly-by-wire aperture ring. Um, it is not mechanically connected. I don't have it powered on and attached to the camera, and I'm turning the aperture ring and it's doing nothing. This is an electronic aperture ring. I am happy to see an aperture ring on lenses like this. Nothing nothing makes me madder than buying these lenses and they, they cheap out and they don't include the aperture ring. It is really nice to have the option to set the aperture on the lens specifically for those compact camera bodies that may not always have a ton of buttons and switches to be able to control everything. So specifically for my a7C, this makes changing the aperture, I love to shoot in aperture mode, it makes changing the aperture really easy. The lens also has a really nice knurled focusing ring. Um, again, all metal construction and it's really easy to turn. That metal construction really makes it feel nice. Like I said, the focal length of this lens is 27 millimeters and in terms of an angle of view that amounts to about 57 degrees. One thing to note about that aperture ring is it is a clicked aperture ring. I didn't see any way on the lens that you could actually adjust that and declick the aperture ring. So video world, that matters to some folks. Um, just know that before you buy this lens. Um, the aperture ring I don't think can be declicked. Taking a look at the aperture blades, there's seven blades and it yields sun stars that look something like this. One thing I found particularly interesting about this lens is the lens cap actually has a built in uh, USB-C dock. So you can actually plug this lens into your computer, update the firmware, and make sure that everything is operating up to speed. It's easy for me to tout that as a praise of the lens. Um, it's really nice to have that functionality. I will say though, it kind of sucks that lenses are having to include that these days. It's really nice to think about these lenses as complete packages, and when you buy them from the factory, they're just gonna work and work and work. I guess it is a little more realistic though to include the mount so you're able to update everything and, and adjust the settings on your own if you need to. I just really don't like to fiddle with stuff like that, but your miles may vary. That may be something that you're super interested in. For my usage, I'm probably not going to be going into the settings and updating the firmware and then, unless the lens just really starts giving me some serious problems. The lens has a microscopic 39 millimeter filter thread on the front of the lens. One of the main selling points of this lens, one of the most important features of this lens is its autofocus capability. And again, I was shooting this on my Sony a7C system and I found the autofocus to be pretty darn good. I had a few situations where the lens did hunt and the lens took a second or two to grab focus. I, 
honestly, I didn't find that to be much of a problem uh, throughout the course of a day of shooting. But for video purposes, it is worth noting that the lens does make some noise. I don't think it's loud enough to where it would be detectable in a video, but if you really listen to the lens, there is some electronic uh, motor turning and different sounds that you could hear when the lens autofocuses. So I guess that's to be expected. Focusing distance, the lens actually focuses pretty close at 0.35 meters. Um, that's a few inches away from the camera. Obviously that isn't anywhere near macro reproduction capabilities, but the lens is actually able to get pretty close. But how do the images look? So I'm gonna show you some of the images I shot now. And again, I told you this was this is fall in Kentucky. I went to one of my local hiking trails um, and just took the lens out to see what I could get. First couple images were on top of the mountain. Um, this is where I did my sun star test I mentioned earlier, and then just took some kind of generic shots off into the leaves. But I did walk up to the overlook and I was able to get a couple shots looking over the mountain. After that, I took the lens out on the trail and I happened to bring my Laka M6 with me as well. So look for a video about that coming in the future. Uh, but I did take the lens out on the trail and I shot some shots with it down through the... In terms of what I thought about the actual image quality of the lens, the lens seemed to be producing images at a relatively high resolution, although I can't really say that I was able to test that too effectively on my a7C. The a7C produces 24 megapixel images when you're actually utilizing the full frame. We're using that Super 35 mode, that crop of the image sensor. So these images are likely gonna be about 16 megapixels or thereabouts. But I found the image quality to be pretty darn good. I'm usually kind of an image quality snob with my lenses. I spare no expense on the lenses that I waste my money on. Um, I'm used to walking around with the Sony 24-70 2.8 version 2 or an 85-1.4 or one of these big kind of honking lenses. Um, it was really, really nice walking around with this pancake lens. The a7C felt so tiny in my hands and it was actually a real joy to carry around that day. And I think that represents a real selling point of this lens. Um, you're buying these smaller compact cameras. Um, it makes sense to at least have one really small compact lens that you can pair with the camera to take out to a family event or, a, or to some situation where you don't always want to appear like a serious photographer. So, so there is one more test I wanted to do with the 27 2.8 and I'm going to take my a7c that's recording the video on the tripod right now and I'm going to swap it out with the 27 2.8. So and now we're back shooting this video on the TT Artisans 27 millimeter 2.8 lens. How do you think the 27 2.8 holds up to the $2,700 Sony 24-70 2.8? Let me know in the comments which one you think is better and whether you think this is an adequate substitute. So one of the most interesting things about this lens is the price. Um, this is a Chinese made TT Artisans lens and the best thing about these lenses are how affordable they are. Um, looking online, you're gonna be able to find this lens for about $150, as near as makes no difference. Honestly, you can't go wrong for that price. I've been into photography for over a decade and I've shot the Fast 50 options for almost all the manu major manufacturers, from Nikon to Canon to Sony, all of their 50, all of their kind of general 50 millimeter 1.8 lenses that are out there. And most of the time, those lenses are about $200, $250. Um, the image quality is pretty good, and they're mostly made of plastic. And I think looking at the TT Artisans lens that has, has this really nice fit and finish, um, the lens actually looks great, it feels great, and takes really nice images. I think this lens represents a great value proposition at $150, uh, especially when you figure in the autofocus capabilities. I think this lens is gonna make a lot of sense for a lot of folks. I'll tell you this, it's probably gonna stay on my a7C. And, and that kind of gets me to talking about who this lens is for. It's really hard for me to kind of pinpoint the exact person that this is for. I don't really see the TT Artisans 27 millimeter 2.8 as much of a niche lens at all. It's the kind of lens that almost everyone should own, especially at the price point. Like I said, I envision these scenarios. I'm going to my kid's soccer game or I'm going on a hike with my daughter and I don't want to have the big bulky $2,500 Sony lens attached to the front of my a7C camera body. A lens like this is going to be the go-to option. You pair that with the excellent image quality that it delivers, the small form factor, and I think the lens really makes a lot of sense. In terms of recommending this for a particular type of person, I think primarily someone who's interested in using their camera more and taking their camera with them more. This lens lends itself very much to convenience and portability and ease of use. And I think that's the major selling point of the lens. You're not gonna buy this to be the best landscape lens in the world. You're not gonna buy this lens to be the best portrait lens in the world, but you're gonna buy this lens to be the best lens that you've got with you because you're gonna be more likely to have it with you. I think that most of us, when we get into photography, are drawn to the big lenses with big prices and big apertures and all these, these wonderful specifications, but also 
also come with huge price tags. And I think that it's easy for us to forget that we live in a world now where we, we can get exceptional optics from companies like TT Artisans and don't have to break the bank. Make no mistake, this lens isn't gonna yield the highest image quality ever conceived in a camera lens, but I think it's gonna make you more likely to grab your camera and take it with you on a daily basis. And honestly, what better compliment can you give a lens than that? But let me know in the comments, are you interested in compact pancake lenses like this? Is, does this look like a lens that you would use? But as always guys, thank you so much for watching my videos and we'll see you next time.